for a change? I am talking, talking, talking to you. Then get ready to explore the quantum possibilities. It's time to transform that outdated paradigm into something universal and new. Time to uncover the truth hidden beneath the veil of lies. A time to think outside the box as we link to a higher consciousness. Welcome to the Awakening. 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 And now the hosts of Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. Nori Love and Augie Nost. Well, hello, radiant beings and star children and light workers and whatever name you call yourself. It's been interesting, right? Have you, I mean, have you guys been feeling the energy shifts? Augie, how about you? Oh, I feel it for the last month or so it's been building up for me. Wow. So, so we're happy to be here with you and we're happy to be having a more casual conversation tonight about something um, that we think is so instrumental in creating the, how would I say it? The, the way, just... the way that you want things to go, right? This is this is going to be helpful in helping you create the way that you want things to go, even when it looks like really bad stuff is happening around us, right? Yeah. Right. So before we get started, I do want to thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for the donations. And um, if you would like to um, sponsor our show or have... Um, have uh, What's I can't even think. Have um, commercials? <laughs> yeah, that's what I it's called. I shouldn't have taken that nap right before we. Were, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Just just let us know. You can reach us at um, broadcast team alpha at gmail dot com, and there is another place where you can see some old shows that we've done, and that's on broadcast team alpha YouTube channel. But. We're really excited to invite you over to our new, um, our new project and mission, and it's called the Mastermind Connection. And you could probably get the best feeling for it over on Patreon. But every Sunday we are meeting and we um, have people joining us from around the world to do um, a mastermind, to do a mastermind. And what we do is, Augie, why don't you tell them what we do? This is like your your thing, so. Oh, you're on the roll, Nuri. I'm no, not. I insist. <laughs> no, I insist. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, uh, yeah, I, you're right. I am excited about this because I have figured it out. I've watched what happens around the world when you have small masterminds created in the form of maybe a family get together, church groups get together, large groups get together, and they do things and they get things done, which they ask for that is totally sometimes against the laws of physics or to, could be totally even not possible in people's mind but we still get the job done right so, so uh, and we get the job done by how well it's the mastermind when two or more minds are united in harmony they create a third mind that has a potential mind power of the two or more of them multiplied by each other and that is not just a thought anymore now it becomes a powerful energy intention and this reaches into the quantum, find a match for what we are thinking and wanting, and it starts bringing it back into the physical. So, I, folks, if you are listening to this now or at the recording, try to check it out. I think you're going to get excited too, because I am and Nori are, and I think that Send us an email at the mastermind connection at gmail.com and request a uh, link to the mastermind sessions on Sundays right. at uh, 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, East Coast time, 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, West Coast time, and uh, 7 o'clock in the evening in uh, England, 8 o'clock Central Europe, Sweden, and okay. uh, I think yeah. we're, good. <laughs> we're good with that. Um, so what it is, 
is a group of people that come together. We meet on Zoom. So that's why you have to email us for the link. And we join our mind energy by using imagery and intention and thought focus for specific things. Um, a couple of times it's been on well-being and healing. Um, and then, of course, you know, based on what's going on in the world, we also focus our energy there in order to help the fires that are now somewhat better. And yeah, yeah everything like that. So, so come check us out. Come join us. Um, we sure would like to have you there. And so let's... Let's one more thing. One more thing I want to mention right yes. now. I could, I could, I could just feel this one guy back there listening. He was running around the house trying to find a pen to write down the. Uh, oh, email. yeah. <laughs> Let's repeat that one more time. That is the mastermind connection at gmail dot com, and that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you've done your homework on um on abraham hicks um let's let's talk about it i just i want to preface this by saying um i love abraham hicks i i fell into their arms a crumpled mess in the late 1980s and um have just benefited from their work amazingly and now that there's a whole new there's all new groups of people discovering abraham hicks you know i'm hearing people say stuff like um Oh, yeah, she said, thinking that Esther Hicks is the one who's delivering the information and not knowing, you know, what what Abraham Hicks really, really is, what Abraham is. So you did your homework, Augie. What, do you, what did you oh. come up with? Oh, I, well, I can give you what I came up with, but I do, uh, after that, I want you to tell the people really what Abraham Hicks stand for, because I may be a little bit off the mark, because okay. you have been studying him for, well, yeah, decades, and um, I'm just a recent study of the subject, and uh, you're in the deep waters, and I'm just, you know, splashing around in the puddles on the shore. So, so can, uh, can, I, can I use this as a teaching moment? Yes. <laughs> okay. Abraham Hicks is not a him. Right. Okay. All right. So go ahead and tell me, it, tell me, tell me what you know. Yeah. What I came up with is that it is a group that is calling, they're, they're projecting themselves as under the name of Abraham Hicks. And this is a spiritual group, non embodied spiritual group of higher souls. Am I close, Nari? I think I think that that would be um, doable. Yeah, I think that's good. I think it can be. It's going to be. It's going to be interpreted in many ways, depending upon you know our perspective. So, absolutely, it could be that. Um, okay. You know, I mean, technically, in 1986, there was Esther. Right, Esther, who you know, Esther Hicks, and she was with her husband Jerry, Jerry Hicks, and they had a great relationship and a great business, and they did what they love, and I mean, just they had a great life. And Jerry talked Esther into uh, meditating, and Esther liked it so much that that was like all she wanted to do. And the next thing that she knew, there were some things that happened, and. You, um, like Jane Roberts died and she, anyway, that's a side story. We won't go down there. Um, but she discovered that she, that this collective intelligence can come through her. The collective intelligence can come through all of us because we are the con collective intelligence. The only thing that prevents us from constantly channeling that level of consciousness and information is the things that kind of squeeze us off, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the collective that we are, you know, and that we get squeezed off by stress and worry and judgment and all of those things that evoke an emotional feeling in us that, that, takes us out of our, our center. That's what squeezes us off. Otherwise, we could all be walking around channeling infinite intelligence. In the, in the beginning, Esther said that when she experienced Abraham, which is a group, right? It is a group. Initially, she said it felt like a smart dead person. 
But then she said, no, it wasn't really a person. It's not like when your father dies and you talk to him. She's like, it, it was it was more than a person. You know, it was the collective intelligence. It's non-physical consciousness. It's infinite intelligence. It's source. Right. Abraham is and that the way that we channel that is the pure form of energy that we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing, when you talked about that pure form of energy, um, <clears throat> energy can be many things. And they talk about the vortex all the time. Be in the vortex. And uh, when we are not on the vortex, things are not uh, going as well. And when we are in the vortex, everything seems to fall into place. Could you maybe define the vortex maybe a little bit for us too? Yeah, the vortex isn't a place. It's, it's an energetic frequency. Yeah. Um, it can be likened to a place. I mean, when I was first working with this material, I kind of likened it as to, you know, like a, like an attic. And that attic contained everything, every experience, every feeling that I wanted to have in there. Um, but in order to access the stuff that's in the attic or in the vortex, you have to be a like vibration. So if you have amazing things like, you know, dynamic health and, you know, beautiful relationships and the lifestyle that just makes your heart sing, if you have all of those things in your right attic or the vortex, you have to meet that vibration in your own vibration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there we seem to get in our own way a lot all the time, seems like. And uh, we don't even know that we do that. We feel like, yeah, well, you know, this was the right thing to say and uh, it could bring right. the vibration down. Or uh, And, um, well, if we don't know it, you know, we don't necessarily feel bad about it, but the subconscious know it. And uh, we say things without thinking it. Oh, I got an example. Uh, remember yesterday, Nori, we were talking about a friend and um, I said something <laughs> stupid, that just funny thing that I said. And I, you know, the person had done something that really wasn't for their uh, higher good. And I said, oh, what an idiot. Well, you called me on it. And I said it in a humorous way, but you see, the subconscious mind don't understand humor. And by me saying that, I brought in this concept, you know, you're an idiot, and that brought my vibration down. That's just a small example. Right, right. We, we do things like this, and we got to watch ourselves. Well, we do do things, but we can't watch ourselves. We can't watch ourselves all the time. Okay, what vibration am I right now? I mean, you'll yeah. make yourself crazy, and I've been practicing this since the 80s. And the thing that I love about Abraham Hicks is that the whole premise of this is that the purpose of life is to experience joy. When you're experiencing joy, you are in the vortex. When you have those moments, you know, where you're in the flow and all this magical stuff is happening, you are in the vortex. So the purpose of life is joy. And once we get over all of the ego and the, the training and the indoctrination that no, you know, no pain, no gain, life is supposed to hurt. Once we can, you know, undo that belief system and open to the possibility that the purpose of life is joy, then... We can know when our vibration is going off the rails because we're not feeling joy. So mm. instead of analyzing every thought that we're having, all of a sudden you go, wow, you know, my fists are balled up, my neck is tight, you know, I'm, my jaw is clenched. What just happened? And that's how you use the signals, right? The emotional body signals that, that your higher being gives to you to say, hey, you're going off track. Yeah. If you look over here, you know, if if you and you don't even have to overcorrect. Like let's say you're about to go off the rails, right? And you know, you're you called somebody an idiot and you feel bad about it and you don't have to overcorrect. You know, you don't have to go to confession. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to beat yourself up. All you have to do is take yourself up from that energy. There's no judgment in this. It's just, it's, it's energy and choices and the consequences of those choices. So when you go off the rails, all you have to do is do something that, that feels better. 
Mm. You know, go for a walk, take a nap, pet your cat, whatever. So, but I'm kind of going, I'm going off the rails a little bit here because what I really want to, to say is that it's our emotional guidance system, right? That's what Abraham really, really talks about in depth. It's the emotional guidance system that tells you, hey, you're on the highlighted route for joy or make a right turn, make a U-turn. You just missed your turn. You know, you're, you're missing the vibrational mark. So it's our emotions. It's the way that we feel that guides us to higher consciousness. If we just pay attention and then you know, work with it, work with the energies to raise our vibration. Does that make sense? Or how can I make that more clear? No, I don't think you can. I I think that was pretty good. Uh, That's understood by everybody. And the old concept that, you know, work hard and you will succeed in life. It's not the way it works. You know, there's a difference. It's a difference between working hard and working smart, too. And when you start invoking the energies in the vortex, I guess, Wait, uh, in you, yourself. What does, what does that mean? Uh, well, when you become part of that energy, because we are an expression of source. Right. It's just invoking sounds so, you know, so I invoke the energies of... No. Well, I kind of meant like being aware, being a, evoking it in your mind by being aware of uh, it. Okay, cool. That's good. Would that fly? Yeah, I mean that, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> Goofball. Um, we got to have fun here, Nori. I know, I know. So, so Abraham Hicks has been going around the country around the world, you know, every year, and they had a monster bus, I think they still have a monster bus, and they they have an amazing life, right? Esther Hicks, you know, and her entourage, um, they, they go, you know, to La Jolla in February, and um, Arizona at this time of year, and Italy, and then there's the cruise, and all they do is go around from place to place, and it, share the experience of Abraham with people and people experience it um, just by virtue of being, you know, at the seminar, but also you really experience it. If you get chose, if you get chosen to sit in the hot seat where you get to communicate directly with Abraham and, you know, Esther, Esther was asked where, you know, the word Abraham came from. And Esther said that, that the block of thought that was delivered to her with the word Abraham just made sense for her to call this group of, you know, this, uh, this um, m- multiple beings of source energy to call them Abraham because Abraham is the heart of, is at the heart of every religion. And Abraham is that which we are. And Abraham also put, put them first, like in the phone book or on Google. Mm. Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. Yeah, that was pretty. I thought that was yeah. funny, but it loses something. You mentioned the hot seat, Nori, and uh, you have been on a cruise with uh, Abraham, and you ended up in the hot seat. Could you maybe mention some about that? Yeah, and actually, I did, I wasn't in the hot seat on the cruise. I, I I've you know gone to a bunch of their their gatherings, and mm. um, when I was in D.C., I ended up. And I wanted to be in the hot seat. You know, when you know, when Abraham looks out over the crowd through Esther's eyes, um, they look for the energy that each person is emitting, and they call that the rocket of desire. So they're looking to see what the rocket of desire is. And I had, you know, I I had this passionate. Um, um, project going on. And I also had some contrast in my life. You know, I had some things that were going kind of bad and I just really wanted to talk to Abraham about it. And, um, when they say, okay, who's next, raise your hand. And they looked at me through Esther's eyes and literally I could feel like a beam of energy on and around me as I walked up to the hot seat. When I looked into Esther's eyes that was radiating Abraham, I can't even tell you what it felt like. It felt it felt like ultimate beingness. It felt like 
more expanded mindfulness than I've ever felt. My senses were heightened and I felt love. It felt like being in the vibration of love, right? So what is that 528 or I know there's debates on it. So I'm just going to hold it here because we're going to go to the break and we'll pick it up. Um, uh, Maybe we'll talk about the hot seat or maybe we'll just talk about more. I mean, there's just. mm -hmm. Yeah, we got four minutes left for the break though. Okay. Yeah, let's just, uh, you know, when you ended up in the hot seat, did you get your answers uh, covered? Did you get the answers you wanted? Well, you don't even have to go in the hot seat to get your answers, to get your an- to get answers. Oh. Just, just by virtue of being in that room, inevitably, somebody else will, will get an answer that answers your question. So absolutely, it changed my life. I mean, it, it literally changed my life. And it was so profound, though, because one of, one of the last things Abraham said to me was, um, you know, we, we think you need new friends because I told them what was going on in my relationship. And, you know, the, it was it was my significant other's friends. And it was so powerful, the transformation that happened that literally I w- went home, I packed up, I left the relationship, I never looked back and it led me to all of the amazing places that I wanted to bring myself to energetically. But had I not had that transformative experience, there's no way I would have done it that way. You know, it would have been drama and, you know, angst and tears and, you know, all the stuff people do when they're breaking up. It was none of that. And it was so effortless. And that's what you were talking about before. It's not working hard. It's the, the mantra is energy, not effort. Now, that doesn't mean that you sit at home, you know, rubbing the genie lamp, waiting for something to drop out because you have to take inspired action. That's part of that's a part of the universal law. Mm-hmm. So you're not just sitting home, you know, launching, <laughs> launching intentions, waiting for the, you know, the red bike or the red car to drop into your living room, you know, or, or, you know, the magical relationship or the book or the, um, you, you know, the, the Academy Award or whatever it is that you really desire in life, mm-hmm. the spiritual, the spiritual attainment that you desire in life. It looks like it's about stuff, but this is all, this is all about returning to who we really are. Mm-hmm. And that is source energy. Yeah. We're not just this body. And in the physical, probably it all starts in the mind, like maybe uh, we get what we think about and believe, and that may be the flag that goes up and telling the universe that, oh, there, there is someone here that wants to communicate. Do you think that could be a start? Well, that happens all the time. That's happening yeah. every single minute of the day. Every single minute of the day, you know, we are constantly telegraphing our desires and to the universe. And mm. you know, fortunately, it's not instant manifestation. So, you know, some things don't happen because people say, I didn't create this. I didn't intend this. But when we're unaware of the thoughts that we're thinking, right? And we do have some old programming. Like yeah. I had an old, I had an old victim programming. So I continued to draw victim to myself until I figured out how to raise my vibration out of there. So we're, we're going to go to break 30 seconds and we'll be back. We'll see you on the other side. This is the Broadcast Team Alpha Show, hosted by Nori Love and Augie Nost. The one show that takes your doubts of the unknown and spins them into reality. Share your thoughts by calling our hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Call Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. More cutting edge conversation and exploration of the quantum universe after this. They say that the truth is stranger than fiction. What if they are one and the same? It's a life form, unlike anything we know, not cellular, but electrical in nature, extremely intelligent. Join Dave Emmons, host of The Strange Truth, every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, 
as he connects the dots that others miss. The Strange Truth is a groundbreaking two-hour talk show that interviews the hottest UFO experts, experiencers, whistleblowers, and spiritual masters from around the world. A tool for people to connect with the universe and begin to understand it. The Strange Truth. It digs deep into current events, the extraterrestrial contact phenomenon, explores suppressed history, and dissects false flag conspiracy, all while expanding your spiritual ascendance. What was that name again? The Strange Truth, hosted by Dave Emmons, live every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Come get tomorrow's news today. Immerse yourself in an epic journey through time where ancient mysteries unfold within a story of love and betrayal, as well as a battle of good versus evil in the Emissary Book One, the reader's favorite gold medal award winner for Visionary Fiction 2019. The action and adventure of the Emissary continues in the Emerald Tablet Book Two. The 2019's bronze medal award winner, The Emissary and the Emerald Tablet, by Tamara Veach and Renny DeFazio are both available now on Amazon.com. Let your reading adventure begin. Great. It's great. I think it's great. It's great. I think it's the all-new KCOR Digital Radio Network. Make a note of it. It's great. Hello, KCOR listeners. Lorian Fenton here from The Fenton Files to tell you about UFOCon 2020 in San Francisco, February 20th through 23rd. A conference like no other, UFOCon is where experiencers are going to reveal new information and science and consciousness will collide. So get your tickets at UFOCon2020.com. That's UFOCon2020.com. Don't miss what will be the most talked about conference of the decade. If ever a breed was affectionate to a fault, it's the Golden Retriever. They're people dogs, pure and simple. And the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada needs your help. If you would like to volunteer, foster, adopt, or donate, go to the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada's website at grrsn.org. That's grrsn.org. Or call 598-GOLD. That's 598-G-O-L-D. Going live. Come explore the quantum possibilities. This is Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. To be on the show live, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. Share your thoughts of the show on Twitter at KCOR Radio, hashtag KCOR. Or join the Cutting Edge Conversation live in our chat room at KCORradio.com. Now back to Broadcast Team Alpha with your free-thinking hosts, Nori Love and Aginas. Yay. And I'm so glad he said the phone number because we want you to call in. We want to talk with you. Anything that you want to talk about, Abraham Hicks or Law of Attraction, or um, we can talk about the laws of the universe, but predominantly tonight we're really focusing on Law of Attraction. So, Augie, did you make it back with us? I am here. Ah, you are. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I get for forgetting to unmute myself. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you were on a roll before the break here, and uh, I tell you, the more we talk about this, the more happy we become just listening. That is me. I was I, I became more and more happy as I was listening to you, and I'm hoping the other listeners have some of that same feeling because hearing this actually raising our vibration of us, and we don't have to do anything, just listen. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Listen, yeah, feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that we are extension of source energy. Exactly. And that extension 
once we understand that extension, it also helps us to be in the receiving mode where all the good things can happen to us. But we we got to remember we have a filter in our mind and the subconscious, all the subconscious mind programs and also the conscious mind that makes us believe that, oh, yeah, we're not perfect. And, you know, all this good stuff that our brother-in-law is telling us, right? But we are source energy and we must never forget that. And that's where everything good comes from. Right. And not forgetting that is a practice thing. Not forgetting that we are source energy is a practice thing. And it's kind of it's kind of rote in the beginning. You know, you 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 have to practice it. But what you were talking about being in the receiver mode is that we are extension of source energy. We are physical and we are non-physical. We are more non-physical than we are physical. And we forget about that. So we're like attending to life and attending to, you know, runny noses and taking the kids and doing this and doing that and forgetting about our, our energetic being. And when we remember that we are infinite intelligence, that we are connected to source, that we are pure positive energy, then we can release the limitations that keeps us separate from that. And when we are flowing in that higher energy, that higher consciousness, you, you cannot help but be open to the give and the take of higher consciousness and the and the manifestation of of experiences i mean that's that's what we came here to do yeah and here here's a comment that i think i want to mention and that is that we are always full time 26 hours a day including the overtime connected to source there is no time when we are not connected but we have these barriers sometimes who we created in our conscious mind that blocks us from even receiving it or maybe understanding it. Right, right. But those blocks, those blo those blocks create an experience in your life, right? Those old programming or those blocks creates a feeling in your body that mm. doesn't feel so good a situation a person place thing experience that doesn't feel good and if you go wait a minute this doesn't feel good this is about my energy this is about my vibration then you can bypass like i bypass the big breakup right the big dramatic breakup thing you know, I, I had a higher vibration. I was tuned in, as Abraham says, tapped in, turned on, right, to pure positive energy, and it was effortless. Mm -hmm. So I got to bypass that old lower vibration drama that I would have done. And, and as we learn this, and as we embody that we are not separate, that we are always flowing with source energy, that we are always an extension of source energy, then we begin to work with it in our in our day to day experience. Yeah. And one of the benefits is you will be happier. Like here's here's a really basic um, tool that I use. So I'm I'm a double certified law of attraction coach, life coach. And one of the, this is a super basic thing. When I have a group, right? Augie was in a couple of my groups. The first thing that we do is take your emotional vibrational temperature, if you will. And it's really simple. Like I've scaled it down to really simple uh, dynamics. So it's on a scale from zero to 10. So zero is, you know, I am completely in the depths of despair. You know, nothing could possibly be worse than maybe depression, anger, ra rage, vengeful, right? Work your way up the scale. And 10 is like you're really flowing in the higher energy. So just tap into that right now. And what number are you feeling on the emotional vibrational scale? If you had a bad day, if you're balled up, if you got the flu, you're not going to be a 10. Right. But and it's and it's unique to you, like, you know, a five for me is going to be different for five for you. It's completely personalized. So just mm -hmm. off the top of your head, throw out a number. What number are you? Oh, I, I feel pretty good most of the time. I'm probably, I don't know, seven or eight all the time, probably. OK, so what what number were you when you called that person an idiot? Oh, uh, I, I was pretty good before, but afterwards when I realized what I said and you called me on it, I probably jumped down a, a notch, I'm sure. Right. So this is a good example of how to use the emotional vibrational scale. Yeah. So, 
So the, the good thing is you're like, okay, you know, I just dropped down to a six. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to, you know, go into all the dynamics and the drama and the story? No. You know, I know this is energy. I know this is just about vibration. I'm going to go listen to some music until I feel better. And then I'm going to start creating what I'm creating in my life. Yeah. And that goes probably back to allowing the universal machine to do the work for you. Allow in more than forcing. And um, this universal machine in its finest component is probably the vibratory energy of love, isn't it? It could be. Yeah. It could be. So all of those words, you know, and, you know, I am so visual, right? So when you say the universal machine, like I just go, you know, to a whole different page in the book. So, so if, if it is love, what we're talking about is love is the highest vibration. Love is the vibration where everything happens, where well-being and relationships and joy and bliss and connectedness happen. Mm -hmm. So Tapping into that, remembering that we are that, choosing to realign with that, that opens you up to all possibilities coming to you. So it's not really a machine, right? It's not really, really a machine yeah. as it is a matching the frequency. Like the, mm -hmm. the, the universal bandwidth of you know where you want to be is a certain frequency and you're just dialing your dials to get back up to get to that frequency as well. And it's a constant dialing. Oh, I don't feel good. Let me dial my dial. Right. Oh, yeah, that just happened. Let me dial my dial. So the most important thing is that you, if, I, if there's one thing I can convey tonight to anybody who's really new to this, you have control over what you feel. You have control over the way that you live your life. You have control over those things that you think you don't have control over. Mm-hmm. And once you realize that that's true, right, you have to take responsibility for it, then you can start creating, then you can start working with your energy and your vibration and your desires, and all the things that you want to make happen in this life, and, and have a cohesive way to, to follow that path. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And when we are requesting things from the source we got to remember we are an extension of that source we're part of that source so what we are really doing is just summoning something that we already are it's ours if we are able to consciously also help maybe tap into it and understand and feel the vibration I just I, got, I don't I know got, what I, I got I lost. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I said there either, but it <laughs> I makes got sense. Lost. Okay. So the 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 foundation of what you're saying is that we are extensions of source energy, right? Call it God, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's when we limit ourselves and we begin to pinch ourselves off from that energy. That's when we don't mm -hmm. feel good. That's yeah. when the opposite of what we desire happens. But the beautiful thing is every single time you feel like, oh, my God, the universe just you know, sucker punched me. What was that? The, the beautiful thing about that, that's called contrast. Yeah. You use the contrast to take you to your next energetic higher vibration. You're like, okay, this looks like it's divorce, but okay, how, how can I scale that emotion down so that I work with the pure energy of that? And you can. I mean, you can even work with grief that way. And I know that's a bold statement, but it's true. Yeah. So, so we we have control over all of that. It's just, it's it's not what is familiar to us. What's familiar to us is the things that you were saying before, Augie, the stuff that's stored in our subconscious mind, right? It's the 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 stuff that's in our conscious mind that motivates us to do the things we don't want to do, right? To not show up the way that we want to show up. Yeah. But but that will always show up as an uncomfortable feeling or experience. And if you just go, wow, okay, I know what this is. This is a chance to raise my vibration. Then it's a gift. Anything that comes up is a gift. Yeah, and some of the so-called negative things that happens to us may be a good thing because it gives us better things later on. 
Well, that's true. But when you learn, when you really master working with your vibration, even when those things that don't feel good happen, you're able to modulate the way you feel about them so that you're able to go, okay, what's good about this that I'm not seeing yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that happens a lot, right? And it's just our old programming that makes us go on the spin cycle or freak out or do that emotional thing that we do because it reminds us of something that happened a long time ago. And we can extricate ourselves from that by working with energy. Mm -hmm. So Abraham um, was speaking through Esther, and I love what they said about who they are. They said that, we are the vibrational essence that equals the culmination of all that has been lived, both physically and non-physically. That's huge. We are an energy that is expanding consciously and constantly because of the willingness of physical experience and its contribution to the never-ending want or desire. So that's talking about we always have a desire. We want something else. We want to not be in pain. We want to not be in lack. We want to not be in dis-ease, right? That, that's, we always have desire. And when we get better, right, there's more that we want, so mm -hmm. it's the it's the never ending desire that inspires us to higher expansion. Yeah. And yeah. Abraham further went on to say that we can only be now this is the this is the group, right? The entity of beings. We can only be as wise as your wisdom, as loving as your love, and as smart as your brilliance. We cannot be more than you allow us to be. I love that, right? Because we're connected to them. Um so when you find something in us, in Abraham, that you deem worthy, wonderful, beneficial, you must understand that it's a pure reflection of you, of who you are, because you could not get it from them if you were not it. So it's a constant reminder that we are an extension of pure positive energy, that we are an extension of mm. infinite intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Comments, questions, general feelings about life? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm sitting here with my jaw in my lap, so uh, I'm going <laughs> to get myself together because Aww. it makes so much sense. And uh, anybody out there that's listening to this, they are going to be saying, hmm, where can I learn more? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they can definitely come over to the Mastermind Connection Patreon Um we're we're going to be having law of attraction, you know, like 101 and 102 and why law of attraction doesn't work. Um, we're going to be having gatherings like that. So you can learn there. And certainly when you're over there, you know, I, I will be discussing like all of the books that were just the best books ever, you know, mm -hmm. to to really um, learn this from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, I'm looking forward to that because I'm definitely going to be in that class because uh, I haven't studied her uh, probably more than, uh, well, it's less than a year that I started to look at the uh, the videos of Abraham. And uh, I've seen quite a few and it looks brilliant. It looks soul lifting to me and it made me feel better too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, this isn't, this is the same thing that goes back to, you know, Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. This is just packaged in a different package. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're calling law of attraction. You know, I, I mean, I worked at University of California Hospital in San Diego, and they taught law of attraction to everybody, including, you know, the CEOs and the doctors. I mean, everybody, but never were the words law of attraction even mentioned. They taught UCSD a Hospital how to work with energy. It was wow. brilliant. It was brilliant. It's brilliant. Gee, did they and have a name for it, or they called it the experience? Ah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I was wow. like, this is law of attraction. I'm like, they're teaching everybody law of attraction, and it made you know for a better experience for everybody, not just the patients, but for everybody that worked there. Mm -hmm. And a better life. Hmm. I know. That's ex excellent. That yeah. is good. Yeah, that, uh, you know, the uh, vibration is raising because there is a hospital here in Tucson that uh, allow Reiki practitioners to come in and work with people. 
Yeah, that's getting uh, more and more prevalent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love that. And, you know, people, um, people's desire or disappointment, you know, in the medical system, um, you know, is driving uh, tons of more people to people, you know, like Reiki, ma to Reiki masters, to energy healers, to alternative practitioners. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love, you know, that, that all of those radiant beings who do what they do, right, we do what we do, are there ready to receive because, you know, this is a brand new age. Mm -hmm. This is the age of Aquarius. And this is not, you know, this is not the way it was 10 years ago. And it's, it's not the way it was. I mean, with the energies that have been happening, like in the past several weeks, this today is, is like light years different than what yesterday was. I don't know about you, but like the, like the transformational roller coaster that we're all going on is dramatic. Do you experience that? Oh yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are people ten. I mean, ten, twenty years ago, I couldn't talk to people like I do today. They would just cross themselves and walk away, you know, tongue in cheek, saying that, but uh, they they wouldn't listen. Now they do. Right. Yeah. But what about you personally? Are you are you having transformative experiences that make you go, "What the heck is happening"? Oh, absolutely. I do that all the time. And, uh, of course, even 10, 20 years ago, my mind was in a different place. I, was, uh, I didn't have the vibration I do now. I mean, 20 years ago, I was doing TV shows on all the misery and the garbage that is going on in the world. Oh, there you go. And th that's where my head was. And because I wanted to point out what was wrong. Well, I could care less about that anymore so there, because we are out thinking the situation instead of out fighting it. Right. And that which you focus on, you draw more of. And the, I know, you know, people take some heat for, for those who don't want to get into the story and get into the drama and look at everything that's wrong. You know, we can do more beneficial work on an energetic level by not looking at all of that stuff. Yeah. And focusing on that, which we want to see. I mean, you know, the, Social media is littered with really negative and difficult stuff. And, you, you know, I am constantly not refusing. I refuse. You know, I know it's there. I know I can dip my toe in the pond if I really want to dial in and see what's going on or what's pretending to be going on. Um, um, yeah. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. No, but your toe in the thought, uh, your toe in the palm, that, that's where it starts sometimes. And then again, we find out that, no, that, that wasn't very nice. That was too cold. So you go back where you know you belong within the matrix. Yeah. Or, the, or the, the, the vortex. The vortex. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And even being with people, like the best thing that we can do for somebody who is depressed is to be happy around them. Yeah. Because it's it's our happiness that raises their vibration, even though they, you know, you might be thinking, wow, I don't want to be happy around them because they're so sad. You know, and the thing, the best thing that we can do for somebody who is sick is look for the wellness that we see in them. Instead of looking at the black circles around their eyes, go, wow, you know, look at how look at how healthy her nails are, you know, look at how beautiful her skin is. Right. When we look for the the well-being and and the goodness and the um the thing that we want to see we help co-create that in the world yep. yep and the thing i think every one of us know people and we look at their life and we see everything they do seems to work out mm -hmm. A lot what of are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing different than maybe some of the other or us? Uh, the thing is that it all is starting out in their mind. They may be in the vortex, and we are not all the time. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we change our thinking? That's probably where it all starts, huh? That is where it starts, and I would just love to reiterate that. You know, we can't monitor our thinking all the time. So use your emotional guidance system. Use that thing that felt like you just got sucker punched from the universe or use the sting of that experience or the sting of what that person said. Use that as a reminder 
to take your vibration higher, to choose to feel better in that moment. Yeah. And then, you know, you do that and you do it again and you do it again. And the next thing you know, you know, a whole day has happened and then you're in the vortex. And but it's a practice thing. Like Abraham Hicks says, you never get it done. You never get it done. We are yep. constantly here to desire more, you know, and to to um, actualize is probably not the right word, but it's a good word, right? To to express ourselves, to be who we came to be, to um, to show up the way we want to show up. Right? These are all the buzzwords in the spiritual community, right? <laughs> but mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but whatever happens uh, that we may be calling negative, look behind the curtain. There is always something good back there that will be caused by whatever we experience that we could call negative. Mm. Somewhere there is a, what is it, silver lining? Yeah, but sometimes you can't, you know, sometimes you're in so much pain that you can't look for a silver lining. And yeah. that and it's unrealistic. Like Abraham says, you can't put a happy sticker on an empty gas tank. So <laughs> if, you know, if you're having one of those moments where you can't look for a silver lining that's too big of a, a leap, then just go for something neutral, right? Just yeah. go just go for something that takes you out of the searing pain that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, or the, or the distress that you're in, and and those can be very mechanical things. You know, like taking a walk, or right? taking a bath, taking a nap, petting your cat. I mean, whatever it, whatever you need to soothe yourself will raise mm. your vibration. Yeah. Well, gosh, we only got two minutes or a minute and a half left of the show, so let's talk about where people can find us. Yeah. So um, you can find us. Um, on the mastermind connection, the mastermind connection at gmail.com. You can email us. We do have the mastermind um, um, sessions on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. They're about 50 minutes at the most. Um, and we mm. join together our, our thought energy for an intentional purpose. And some, there are some really cool people there. I mean, I just, I, I can't wait for Sundays now. So you can join us um, by emailing us at the mastermind connection um, at gmail and we'll send you the link to come join us on sunday and you can also find us on patreon and see all of the cool stuff that um that we are rolling out and and playing in and we would love for you to come join us yes until next week we will be back so you take care of yourself and be good to each other thanks everybody You've been listening to Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. Hosted by Nori Love and Augie Nost. Every Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. The balance of power is shifting, shifting to a new paradigm. Will you be ready? For more information on Broadcast Team Alpha as well as the hosts, Nori Love and Augie Nost, please visit their website at broadcastteamalpha.com. Until next week, remember to keep those minds open while always exploring the endless quantum possibilities. Broadcast Team Alpha, over and out. This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist.